Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's update on COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à cette mise à jour sur la situation du COVID-19 au New Brunswick. Les porte-parole aujourd'hui sont la médecin hygiéniste en chef, la Dr. Jennifer Russell, et le premier ministre Blaine Higgs. Speaking on behalf of the province today are the province's chief medical officer of health, Dr. Jennifer Russell, and Premier Blaine Higgs. Dr. Russell. Good afternoon, everyone. This is a difficult time for all New Brunswickers, and we are confronted with an unprecedented challenge, and we are all being asked to respond with new routines that are unfamiliar and sometimes confusing. But bear this in mind. As you adjust to our new reality, the power to slow the spread of COVID-19 so that our healthcare providers can manage this illness rests with you. We are all doing our part by practicing social distancing, that is a physical distancing and maintaining self-isolation when we are directed to do so, we can flatten the curve and reduce its impact on New Brunswickers. And by flattening the curve, again, that just means slowing the rate of transmission, slowing the effect of this and the impact on our healthcare system so that we can cope with this. Today, I want to talk about what self-isolation is all about and how we can practice it effectively. First, there is one new confirmed case of COVID-19 to report today. This patient is between the ages of 20 and 30 in Zone 1 in southeastern New Brunswick, and this patient recently returned from travel. We now have 18 cases in New Brunswick, all confirmed, as we now are able to provide final confirmation from tests conducted at the Dr. Georges Dumont Hospital Laboratory, as I reported yesterday. Two of these cases have required hospitalization one in Zone 2 in the southern part of the province, and one confirmed case was hospitalized briefly and then has been discharged in Zone 3 in central New Brunswick. And there's a patient whose condition is being evaluated. So again, all confirmed cases to date are people who either traveled outside the province or are a close contact of a confirmed case involving international travel. We have not yet seen cases of community transmission, where a case emerges with no clear link to a known source of infection, but we must be ready when this happens. Aujourd'hui, je veux vous parler de ce qui, que signifie l'auto-isolement au juste et vous expliquer comment vous pouvons, nous pouvons nous auto-isoler avec efficacité. Tout d'abord, je vous annonce qu'il y a un nouveau cas confirmé de COVID-19 à signaler aujourd'hui. Il s'agit d'une femme âgée de 20 et 30 ans dans la zone 1, soit le sud-est du Nouveau-Brunswick. La patiente euh, est quelqu'un qui a voyagé. Il y a maintenant 18 cas au Nouveau-Brunswick, tout confirmé, car nous sommes maintenant en mesure de fournir une confirmation définitive à la suite des tests effectués au laboratoire de l'hôpital du Georges Dumont, comme je l'ai mentionné hier. Deux des personnes infectées ont dû être hospitalisées. Dans la zone 2, le sud du Nouveau-Brunswick, une personne avec confirmation d'infection a été hospitalisée brièvement et a depuis reçu son congé. Dans la zone 3, région centrale du Nouveau-Brunswick, l'état d'un patient continue d'être évalué. Je souligne à nouveau que tous les cas confirmés jusqu'à présent au Nouveau-Brunswick sont des personnes qui ont fait un voyage à l'extérieur de la province ou sont un, un contact étroit d'un cas confirmé qui a fait un voyage à l'étranger. Nous n'avons pas encore constaté un cas de transmission communautaire, c'est-à-dire un cas où il n'existe aucun lien précis avec une source connue d'infection. Nous devons cependant nous y préparer car cette situation va se produire. We are working to increase the number of COVID-19 tests to effectively capture those who may have the disease, those who have been in contact with cases, and those who are most vulnerable to its effects. This will provide New Brunswickers with important information to better understand what is happening in our communities. Our team is and continues to meet with our colleagues across Canada to ensure we have consistent and manageable approach to testing. What is most important is that we test the right people, which today means those with symptoms who have recently returned from travel outside the province. 
As of today, if you've travelled outside the province, you need to self-isolate for 14 days. We will have information on our website to, um, to capture the information around exemptions, and we also will have new information provided by the staff at 811. As we go forward, we will identify more contacts. As a result, more of you will be directed to self-isolate for 14 days and to be tested to determine if you have become infected. These measures will protect your family and friends from further spread of the disease. People are asking, what does it mean to self-isolate? What should I do or not do? What does this mean for my family and friends? The general rules of self-isolation are to stay at home, monitor yourself for symptoms such as cough, fever and difficulty breathing, and avoid contact with others. If there are other people living in your home, they should stay in a separate room, use a separate bathroom if possible, maintain a distance of at least two meters or six feet away from others, keep interactions brief. Avoid sharing personal items such as toothbrushes, towels, bed linen, utensils, and electronic devices. Those returning to the province from international travel should avoid contact with people and travel outside the province should avoid contact with people outside their families. They should not be getting their own groceries or other supplies. Have a friend or a neighbour do it for you. They will be happy to help. Those in self-isolation can step outside on their deck for a breath of fresh air, something we all need every day without putting anyone outside their home in danger. For New Brunswickers who continue to play a role in flattening the curve, I thank you and I want to remind you, you don't have to be completely housebound. Fresh air and exercise are the most effective way to prevent and manage stress that these conditions create. But be cautious, maintain two metres or six feet between yourself and everyone you meet and avoid locations where people are gathering. Get outside to exercise, not socialize. Here are some further tips for families in self-isolation. At least once daily, clean and disinfect surfaces that you touch often like toilets, bedside tables, doorknobs, phones and television remotes. Avoid contact with individuals with chronic conditions, compromised immune systems and older adults. Monitor your symptoms daily and use the self-assessment tool on the GNB website to determine your actions. If you develop symptoms, isolate yourself from others as quickly as possible and call Telecare 811. Les gens se demandent ce que signifie l'auto-isolement au juste. Que dois-je faire et ne pas faire? Qu'est-ce que cela signifie pour ma famille et mes amis? Les principaux généraux de l'auto-isolement sont les suivants. Rester à la maison. Surveiller l'apparition de symptômes comme la toux, la fièvre et les difficultés respiratoires. Éviter tout contact avec l'autre personne. Si d'autres personnes habitent avec vous, elles doivent rester dans une pièce séparée et utiliser une, une autre salle de bain, si possible. Maintenir une distance d'au moins deux mètres, six pieds des autres. Garder les interactions brèves. Éviter de partager les articles personnels comme les brosses à dents, les serviettes, la lingerie, les ustensiles ou les appareils électroniques. Les personnes qui reviennent au, au Nouveau-Brunswick après un voyage doivent éviter les contacts avec les personnes qui ne partagent pas leur domicile. Ces personnes ne doivent pas aller faire leurs épiceries elles-mêmes ni aller chercher d'autres produits. Il faut demander à des amis ou à des voisins de les faire pour vous. Ils se feront un plaisir de vous aider. Les personnes en auto-isolement peuvent sortir prendre un peu d'air frais sur les terrasses, ce dont nous avons tout besoin tous les jours, sans placer quiconque en danger. Je tiens à remercier tous les Néo-Brunswickois qui continuent à faire leur part pour aplanir la courbe. Je tiens à vous rappeler que nous n'avons pas resté enfermés à la maison. La façon la plus efficace de gérer le stress de cette situation en train consiste à prendre une bouchée d'air frais et à faire de l'exercice. Mais faites preuve de prudence. Restez au moins deux mètres, six pieds des autres et évitez les endroits où les gens se rassemblent. Sortez dehors pour faire de l'exercice et non pas pour socialiser. Voici quelques autres conseils pour les familles en auto-isolement. Nettoyez et désinfectez au moins une fois par jour les surfaces que vous touchez souvent comme les toilettes, les tables de chevet, les poignées de porte, les téléphones et les télécommandes. Évitez tout contact avec des personnes souffrant de maladies chroniques ou dont le système immunitaire est affaibli ainsi qu'avec les personnes âgées. 
Surveillez vos symptômes chaque jour et utilisez l'outil d'autovaluation qui se trouve sur le site Web de GNB pour déterminer ce que vous devez faire. S'isoler des autres le plus rapidement possible si vous développez des symptômes et appelez Télésoins 811. It bears repeating. Staying home will save lives. This is difficult for everyone, but we can get through this. Thank you. Merci. Good afternoon. Bonjour. We are continuing to work with our federal and provincial colleagues to find ways to meet the challenges related to COVID-19. I spoke with, Prime Minister, with the Prime Minister and my fellow Premiers last evening. One of the topics of discussion was interprovincial borders. You can expect more measures in the coming days on that topic. All decisions, as decisions are made and more information becomes available, I will share it with you. Quand des décisions seront prises et que nous aurons plus d'informations. Je vais vous informer. I also expressed to the Prime Minister the need for consistency. We are seeing new measures being put in place each day, and those measures can vary widely between provinces and territories. We need a national plan that addresses travel between provinces. We need to ensure that people have access to a consistent level of health care across our country. We, have concerned, we are concerned that personal protective equipment will not be available in equally in all sectors. We must do everything we can to get money into the hands of those in need and that all provinces will be able to respond quickly and effectively. We need to be able to answer questions about the EI program and address issues people are having in getting through to Service Canada. We must make sure that financial aid is available to small businesses. Enacting a national state of emergency is the best tool to ensure consistency across our country in the level of health care, safeguarding our supply chain, and in mitigating economic impacts. I, I did support this measure on the call last night, and I do support this measure. And this isn't about uh, legislation to enact wide um, sweeping spending uh, programs that was, I think, initially being proposed uh, in the legislature in, in Ottawa today. But it's, it's about having consistency. It's about ensuring we can all provide the very same quality of health care. We have the same supplies. We can supply the same level of protection for our workers. And, with, and we can continue to have measures that are effective by learning from each other. Having consistency across the country and coordinated measures will better allow us to safeguard our supply chain and food insecurity and help ease the variation in economic impacts across all provinces. Yesterday, we established a toll-free number and an email channel for people to contact us with their concerns. We heard from a lot of people looking for advice, and we heard about some situations that concerned us. For example, we heard about specific businesses that have continued to operate without ensuring the social distancing practices. That's a serious problem and a violation of the emergency declaration. Additionally, it puts us all at risk. We will follow up on each of these situations. We also receive reports of people returning to New Brunswick from away and not self-isolating. Some returning to work even, even and some going to parties or social gatherings. This shows incredibly poor judgment and disregard for your fellow citizens and neighbours. Officers will follow up on every complaint that, is, that has specifics and everyone who is in violation of the emergency declaration risks being charged. The business community in New Brunswick is facing an unprecedented level of uncertainty due to the effects of COVID-19 on their supply chains, logistics, absenteeism, and most importantly, on customer orders and sales pipelines. We believe that targeted financial support to some of these companies in conjunction with the federal financial support to small and medium enterprises will allow these companies to continue operating and employing New Brunswick residents throughout this crisis. As an immediate measure, we will, on a case-by-case -case basis, defer loan and interest payments for up to six months. This will enable businesses with existing loans from the government of New Brunswick to have immediate relief if they are experiencing difficulties as a result of COVID-19. To support our small businesses, ONB, through working with partners, will provide operating loans to support, to support them. These loans will be up to $200,000, and payments of interest and principal will not be required during the first 12 months. These loans will provide targeted support to help companies to address the challenges associated with the crisis and to be able to rebound. 
OMB will also provide upon request working capital in, in excess of 200,000 to help mid to large employers to manage the impacts of COVID-19 on their operations. ONB will focus efforts on working with existing clients and clients that are traditionally eligible for ONB financial assistance in manufacturing, tourism, information technology, business to business sectors, and sectors supporting export activities. This assistance is complementary to existing financial support being made available by, available by our federal partners and institutions and will include specific criteria. More details will be available on the application process in the coming days. This is only a beginning and it's a program that I'll be evaluating with my counterparts as we have our regular meetings to discuss the economic impact, the gaps that exist between the federal program and, and uh, the gaps that we are able to react directly with and fill with the provincial program. We will closely monitor the situation and continue to respond as required. C'est un début. Nous allons surveiller la situation et nous allons continuer à agir aux besoins. As well, we will provide a one-time income benefit to either workers or self-employed people in New Brunswick who have lost their job due to this state of emergency. This one-time 900 benefit would be administered through the Red Cross, and it will help to bridge the time between when people lose their, employ their employment or close their business and receive their federal benefit. Further details on how to apply will be forthcoming. As of today, we have moved 59 patients on the wait list for nursing homes out of hospitals to nursing homes across the province. This allows us to keep our most vulnerable citizens safe while creating space in hospitals for those who may need it in the coming days. You can show you care by calling, texting, or using Skype or FaceTime to see how your loved ones are doing, but do not go see them in person. As a society, we, we need to keep each other safe, and today we will do that by limiting our outside contact. I encourage all of you to continue to listen to public health and to do your part as we endeavor to flatten the curve. Together, we will get through this. Je vous encourage to à continuer de coûter la santé publique et à porter votre contribution pour aplanir la courbe. Ensemble, nous allons traverser cette période difficile. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Premier. Merci. We'll now go to questions from the media. A reminder to each of the reporters, you have the right to one question and one follow-up. Vous allez maintenant procéder aux questions des journalistes. A rappel que vous avez droit chacun à une question et un suivi. We'll kick it off with Stephanie Sirwa, CHSJ News. Yes, thank you. This question is for Dr. Russell. Are nursing home deaths from respiratory problems currently being tested for COVID-19? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Are nursing home deaths from respiratory problems currently being tested for COVID-19? Uh, I don't have any information on that right now. I haven't heard of that happening, but I can definitely ask about that, but I have not heard that that was happening. Okay, do you have a follow-up? I do. This one is for Premier Hicks. There are small businesses who don't currently have loans within the province and are considered essential services. They're operating and looking at layoffs right now. Is there anything being done to immediately address funding difficulties for them? So any, any business that is laying off people that are working and living here in the province, uh, we're looking at finding ways to keep those, in, those um, people with financial assistance and do it in a, in, a, in a rapid manner, I guess, because we know the federal EI program is, is well backed up and, and uh, having difficulties. Uh, so we, we're putting this plan in place. Actually, we're going to be working with the, with the Red Cross in, in how we implement a financial benefit that gets out in a hurry, treating it like we would in a, another emergency that would be more physical in nature and where we would see a quick response from a response organization that is well apt to, uh, to deliver. Thank you. Savannah Aoud, Telegraph Journal. Hi. Um, so my question is for Dr. Russell. As I'm sure you're aware, um, as of yesterday, nearly half of Canada's cases uh, are now community transmission. Um, so I'm wondering, because New Brunswick is only testing six people that have traveled or are in close contact with a traveler, how will we know when we do, in fact, have a community spread? And how do we know that we don't already? 
So that's a very good question. We actually are testing people who haven't traveled at this point to, in fact, look for community transition. So that has started. Okay. Did you have a follow up? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't hear that for some reason, but I'll just go back uh, later. So uh, yesterday, you both spoke of a plan to gradually test different groups. I'm just wondering, um, is that for sake of maintaining a good supply, or are there compa capacity concerns? I know that we've heard the World Health Organization say the key to containing it is to test as much as possible. So why the gradual approach versus just testing maybe all vulnerable groups or all sick people with those symptoms? So, so each province has to approach their testing based on where they are in the outbreak management and outbreak response. So as you know, the first case um, was in Vancouver back in January and at that time the risks were around travel from Wuhan and then Hubei province and then China and then Iran and then Italy. So as things have evolved from travel related cases to uh, community transmission, that changes the approach and the testing prioritization uh, based on, again, what the outcome outcomes you're trying to achieve are and based on resources. So those two things are balanced when you're making these decisions. So at this point in time, uh, we will definitely be um, looking at the, the community transmission as that evolves in, in, in here in this province. And then again, changing our approach and basing our, our next steps and decisions on that. We are expanding our testing uh, capacity and ability. So all the, the 14 testing centers that were opened uh, in the last week or so are all up and running. They are, they are meeting the demands that we have right now. And, and so again, we're, we're, we're increasing our approach stepwise as, as the needs uh, unfold. Thank you. Uh, Vicki Hogarth, Charlotte County TV. Thanks, Dave. Uh, my first question is for Dr. Russell. Um, is there a reason why New Brunswick is lagging behind the other provinces in terms of the number of people we've tested? And do we have a plan to ramp up our testing ability? Hmm. So again, as, as each province has their own um, uh, response in terms of their own unique situation, each, each province started at a different time in terms of when they had their, had their first case and each province would have started with travel related cases and then community transmission. So we're at an earlier stage in our evolution uh, of, as of have things unrolling here in the province. So we expect to see community transmission very soon and we, because it's in other provinces, again, that's why we're changing our testing criteria now to include people from outside the, who have traveled outside the province. Um, and so again, as we're shifting into that phase of our response, we do have increased capacity with the um, testing centers and our, our cap cap capabilities with 811 and our online screening tools. So all of these things are, are, are building around um, the next steps in, in our response. Thanks. Do you have a follow-up, Vicki? Yep, my follow-up is for the Premier. President Trump said he's considering loosening the COVID-19 restrictions in the U.S. matter of days even. Um, are you prepared to tighten the international border as the U.S. considers altering its response to COVID-19? I'm not sure I heard the whole question. Um, in relation, are we prepared to tighten up our border to the U.S.? Was that the, the question? Uh, President Trump has said he's considering loosening the COVID-19 restrictions in the U.S. Are you prepared to tighten the international border if they do alter how they're responding? Yes, yes, we would be. We're, 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 we have no intention of loosening our restrictions uh, in any way. Um, I think that we want to find ways to, to effectively and, and uh, um, have our cross-border trade and commerce moving. Um, we've, we've dealt with the issue in terms of the local issue around Campobello and people to move that way. But as far as people moving in and out of uh, Canada and the U.S. Um, without it being an essential service or an essential need, um, we, would, uh, we, will, we will not be relaxing that anytime soon. Thanks, Vicky. Uh, Jean-Philippe Hughes, Radio-Canada. Yes, so uh, my question is, uh, I think we we spoke yesterday about the peak that is uh, expected for in five weeks. I'd like to know, according to your projections, um, how many cases could that mean in New Brunswick? So I, I think at this point in time, it's hard to predict when, there, when the numbers of cases will peak at this time. So I, I can't speak directly to that. We, again, all the measures in place right now are around containment. 
Uh, and so the, the approach with respect to the borders and self-isolation for travelers, the contact tracing and self-isolation of people with, with, who are diagnosed with COVID-19 and uh, contacts of COVID-19 and also the general population. So the fact that we have only people out and about who need to be working, who are essential workers and healthcare workers, et cetera. So what we are doing right now is definitely changing the trajectory of any projections that anybody could have been making thus far. So at the national level, we are tracking that in terms of as, as each new measure is put in place, what the effect it, it can have on, uh, on the number of cases as they increase. So right now in New Brunswick, we're at 18. Uh, we expect to see more cases, but we expect to be able to do really rigorous contact tracing and self-isolation around those cases and close contacts. And then again, if we see community transmission, all the measures that are in place right now, quite restrictive measures that are to protect people and protect our healthcare workers. And again, from having the numbers go up exponentially, which, which can happen. So if we can avoid that steep rise in cases, then we can keep allowing our healthcare providers and our healthcare system to be able to meet the demands as people develop symptoms and require hospitalization and ICU. So does the ultimate goal of everybody being told to stay home, the ultimate goal of having people wash their hands, the ultimate goal of having people, if they are out and about, social distancing by two meters or six feet. So the most important things that people can do right now are all of those things that I just mentioned. Oui, mais juste avant mon suivi, est-ce qu'on pourrait résumer ceci en français, s'il vous plaît? Alors, la question, c'était au sujet de le, quand les nombres de cas seront les maximums. Et ça, c'est difficile de prévenir à ce moment-ci parce qu'on a pris beaucoup de mesures à, à, à cet instant au sujet de, au niveau de les gens qui ne peuvent pas participer dans la société normale. On n'a pas des, des gens qui peuvent aller au cinéma, ni, ni l'église, les choses comme ça. Alors, euh, pour diminuer les risques, pour avoir plusieurs cas, puis le, diminuer le risque d'avoir plusieurs cas qui, que, qui peut augmenter et, et, et surpasser la, la, la capacité du système de santé, la capacité de, de, des, des travailleurs de, de santé pour être capable de de traiter tout le monde qui a besoin d'être hospitalisé dans les prochaines semaines et les prochains mois. À ce moment-ci, avoir les gens rester à la maison, sauf que ceux qui ont absolument nécessaire de sortir, avoir les gens à la maison, isolés, si on, di si on le di a déjà été diagnostiqué avec COVID-19, s'ils sont des proches contacts de quelqu'un avec le COVID-19, s'ils ont voyagé en hors du province, en hors du pays, Tous les gens sont, devraient être à la maison, sauf que ceux qui n'ont pas besoin de travailler, sauf que ceux qui ont besoin de travailler à ce moment-ci. Toutes ces mesures, et laver les mains, et si vous avez besoin de sortir, de rester six pieds à, à côté des gens proches de vous ou deux mètres, et laver les mains, toutes ces, toutes ces mesures sont en place maintenant pour éviter d'avoir plusieurs cas euh, augmentés dans un temps euh, très tôt. Alors, si on continue à prendre toutes ces mesures-là, c'est difficile à prévenir quand est-ce qu'on va voir un maximum nombre de cas. C'est ça qu'on veut éviter avec toutes ces mesures. C'est pour ça que ce sont en place aujourd'hui. So, my, my follow-up is for Mr. Higgs. Um, with uh, Quebec having more than a thousand cases right now, are you considering closing the border or controlling the border with Quebec the same way um, Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island already do? Uh, yes, we are considering uh, the limiting the access uh, crossing of the borders, and we're we're reviewing that with public safety and with uh, the. Uh, with public health to understand what measures need to be put in place to ensure that it actually makes a difference. Um, you know, it, it's, um, it's a case of do we know where people are going? Do we limit people from going? Um, do, we have, do we have some way to track them? So if, they, if they're going to a certain location, we know that they're isolating. Um, so it's, it, it's um, when we roll it out, um, and, and you know, it, it could come very soon because we're working on it right now. It is, it's a discussion I'll be having again with my, with my um, colleagues, the, the other leaders of the other parties tonight. And uh, should we roll it out, the details will be specific and what we expect questions to be asked, uh, what tracking mechanisms we put in place, and uh, what rules are going to be followed. I don't hear you quite well. Just to make sure, when are you planning these measures? 
So I'm meeting tonight with uh, with my colleagues on the, the COVID committee that with the other leaders. Uh, we are reviewing with public safety. They are putting um, a recommendation forward now of what that might look like, who the public safety officers and how it is integrated with the RCMP and public safety. And, and if we did so, uh, working with public health, what actual impact we, we would see. Um, because it, it, it's, it's more than uh, stopping a car. It, it, it's, a, it's a case of, okay, where are they going and how do we know that's where they're going and they're going to stay? Uh, what's the purpose and, and how, do, how do we track it? So, um, so I want to know the full, uh, full gamut of what it, what it means, who we're dealing with partic particularly, and how it's going to be monitored, and then how effective we expect it to be. Thank you. Elizabeth Fraser, CBC. Hi there. Uh, my question is for the, the Premier. You, you mentioned earlier that a line was set up yesterday where people can call in. Were the employees at these companies that were violating the rules sent home? It's, it's not clear to me what these officers are doing when they respond to these concerns. So the first... So the first uh, exercise was to, to do the surveillance and understand uh, what is our level of, um, of compliance. And we, uh, out of uh, 764 companies that were actually uh, um, evaluated over the weekend and over the last few days, we found that um, there, were about, there was about a 94% compliance. The ones that were identified, the 6% that were not compliant, have been uh, and are being revisited. Um, with a warning that this is what's required for you to, to actually f come into compliance. Uh, f not being in compliance will either result in penalties related to fines or shutdown of the facility. Uh, additionally, the requirement is that these are facilities that are open because we've allowed them to be open, not because someone just decided they were going to close. Um, we have requirements there, and, and it's interesting. We've seen uh, Quebec and uh, Ontario you know, I've introduced new measures just uh, today that are very reflective of the measures we've had in place for the last uh, last week. But it is important that there's a follow-up. There's important there's a surveillance. There's important there's a, a compliance requirement. And there's a penalty clause if you're not following uh, the rules. You know, um, we can all talk about getting better, but sometimes people need more encouragement to do just that. Do you have a follow-up, Elizabeth? Um, yes. Um, I have a question for Dr. Russell. Under the plan to transfer long-term care patients to hospitals, is it possible that any ALC patients were sent home instead, and is that even an option? I have only heard about the patients that are being transferred out of the hospitals at this point in time. Thank you. Silas Brown, Global News. Hi, uh, Dr. Russell. Um, I'm curious, uh, this has been addressed kind of a couple times today uh, about expanding the criteria of testing. I'm wondering if you could just kind of walk us through um, what that's going to be expanded to, who's going to be eligible, and what the new rules around testing are going to be. So as the national criteria have changed in terms of the case definition, our, we, that is what we've been following. And so again, when the outbreak started, uh, when the first case was identified here in, in Canada in BC, the risks were around Wuhan, then Hubei province, then China, et cetera, and expanded globally. And now it's expanded to include people who have traveled um, anywhere outside of New Brunswick. So that's what's happening now, but we also, again, we're looking for community transmission, so we do have uh, some testing being done on people who have not had um, contact with a case and who have not traveled, and that's the basis of, of um, uh, looking for community transmission. But because we've expanded, again, um, the, the case definition, and, and the case definition is changing at the national level probably again this week, um, so we'll be talking to our counterparts at Public Health Agency of Canada about that. Um, we have expanded our testing capabilities, so we have 14 testing centers now, and uh, we're able to um, do all the testing that we need to do around these, these new, um, uh, the new case definition. Do you have a follow-up, Silas? Yeah, um, if testing of people who have symptoms but haven't traveled is just beginning, uh, you say that uh, we currently have no community spread. Uh, what 
evidence is there of that? What are you what are you basing that on if we're only just starting to test people uh, that, that have symptoms who haven't traveled? Well, again, I think uh, in the hospital system, the it, the discretion is there for physicians to have um, to have done some of that testing at already. So I think there have been cases that have been uh, situations where people who haven't traveled had been tested if they had symptoms, uh, and a clinician felt that it was appropriate. So moving forward, we do have what's called sentinel testing happening. So we have um, with the RHAs worked on 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 again that that um, that ability to do that. And once we shift into the knowledge that we have community transmission, then that will that will determine that we're in a, a new phase of, of our response. And so we will adapt accordingly. Thank you. Adam Harris, Brunswick News. Thank you. Uh, Premier Higgs, um, Ontario Premier Doug Ford announced today that the province will charge customers lower power rates for the next 45 days to offset um, higher electricity costs as more people are working at home a fight of isolating or have lost their jobs, is New Brunswick going to do the same thing? Well, although we already have lower power rates here in New Brunswick and Ontario, we are doing, um, we have taken some measures to uh, further, I guess, uh, alleviate the costs of uh, power. In, in relation to uh, the decision that the, the Utilities Board were, was putting forward for rate increase, the uh, Mimi Power asked for that delay, so there will n not be any, uh, any increase for, the, for six months. We were also uh, deferring uh, electricity bill payments for residential and small business customers for up to 90 days, and um, basically extending the existing payment arrangements as well. The other item was waiving interest on past due balances um, and late payment charges um, issued after uh, March 19th. So MB Power announced these measures a few days ago in relation to alleviating immediate concerns, but also relating uh, ensuring that these concerns were related to the actual COVID-19 crisis. So uh, we will be responsive to individual needs and we will ensure that anyone uh, or businesses impacted by this crisis will we'll recognize that and Envy Power has, uh, has already committed to working with them to ensure that they can uh, keep the power on. Do you have a follow-up, Adam? Yes, yes, please. And so just to clarify, there's no further actions being considered. And then I wanted to ask about the Emergency Act you said you have concerns about provinces being able to provide the very same level of health care. Is New Brunswick um, struggling to deliver what other provinces are delivering? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying we are. I'm saying I want to be in a position uh, that as this the intensity ramps up and that, uh, you know, every health system in every province is being maxed out or strained to the limit that we all have the ability to, to ensure that every citizen in our province has the same access to health care and standards as other provinces. And that includes the patient and the work, workers in, in those facilities. And so my, my concern has, has always been that we need to, we are one of, of uh, one province of many in Canada, but we, we need to have a national oversight there to ensure that supplies are available to us um, that, that certainly there's consistency of the standards being met and that we, uh, we can ensure our citizens that that is, that is real and possible and true. So this is not a current situation. This is a situation that exists, uh, or, or sorry, may exist. We're hoping it doesn't. We're hoping the, the mitigation efforts that we put in place uh, will indeed keep us below the, the threshold and our system will be able to manage uh, the way it has for, for many years. Um, knowing that healthcare systems across the country are challenges in New Brunswick and the same as other provinces. And just a clarification on power rates, no further action being considered? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you. Mathieu Rouacomo, L'Acadie Nouvelle. Premier Higgs, you just talked about a lot of you uh, uh, aid to uh, small businesses. Is there a uh, the amount number, uh, 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 how much of all that could cost or how much money is being made available for those small businesses? There, there is not, Matthew, and, and the reason is because I, I want to look at every case. We're analyzing the need, the severity, and the cases, not only for businesses, but, but for people and the number of people they employ and keeping those people employed so that they, and, and for the business to be able to start back up and continue employment when this crisis is over. 
the same logic applies as we look through the, the um, other measures that the federal government are putting in place. I know the norm would be, and we see that across the country where somebody, uh, you know, injects some money. And I know federally, you know, when they were talking about the billions of dollars being invested and then we're trying to get under the hood to figure out, okay, what does that mean? And that's what we're working through right now. Um, you know, like the quick access to EI, but finding that the system is so overloaded that, that, that that's not uh, possible. So what we're focused on is the process to deliver a result. And we'll spend the money necessary to get the result. Mr. Premier, is there a dispute that New Brunswick might have asked the financial means to help its citizens? In its businesses as much as uh, other provinces with, with single funds are doing. Uh, now, was that that we would. Can you repeat the question, Matthew? Yes, sorry. Uh, I was wondering if there's a fear that New Brunswick maybe uh, does not have uh, sufficient funds to help its own businesses and its citizens like uh, other provinces, richer provinces, are uh, doing with their citizens and their businesses. Well, I guess, you know, in, in keeping things in, per, in perspective, we know that, uh, and that's the same logic I was having with a national strategy on this crisis, it was so that we all can maintain the same level of capability in, in, uh, in dealing with the health concerns, but I feel the same way in dealing with, with uh, actual business concern. But I, I do feel comfortable uh, and confident that, that we, can, we can manage this prudently so that we can ensure businesses here can, can restart in the same manner as they, as they were impacted initially. Our goal is that, um, you know, it's not a matter of someone getting a windfall out of this, it's a matter of someone not losing their business and, and not uh, surviving this. So I, I think we can financially do that. Our budget was one that reflected a, an ability to, to deal with emergencies. Um, yes, it'll mean our budget doesn't look much like it did when it started or uh, when it was approved, but, but we had a surplus there and we had a, a debt repayment. We had money there that was for emergencies. Nothing like this, mind you, but, but I'm comfortable that we, we had a prudent budget. We can manage that to help people that need it, and that's where, it'll be, that's where the money will be placed. Laura Brown, CTV News. Uh, Premier, can you tell me if you've decided on a number figure for the fine? What, what was that question again, Laura? Can you tell me if you've decided on a number figure for fines of, of people or businesses for not complying? Well, there are, sorry, there are, uh, you know, it ranges. And I, I know there was a top range that was up around $10,000, I think $10,200. And, and it, it was a staged fine that would be, you know, first and second and third fraction. Um, so th there is a, a kind of a, a formula there. But, um, you know, let's hope we don't get there. But I, I want people to be, uh, to be convinced that we will invoke the necessary um, compliance rules, including fines and penalties, uh, including closing down a company, because we will follow the health, the health rules as, as set out by public health, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a must. This is a, this is a health concern for all citizens of this province, and it is, it is, it is not only unfair, it's kind of unconscionable that, that, that anyone would put others at risk by not following the rules um, that are genuine health concerns. Did you have a follow-up, Laura? Yeah, very quickly, Dr. Russell, I'm, I'm sure you're getting a lot of emails and calls about this too, but I, I'm getting a lot of people ask for clarification that when it comes to self-isolating. So this individual is in a multi-unit condo, and he says a lot of snowbirds have returned over the last week, and they're walking around the building, walking pets, generally moving around just even just the building um, during normal times, and uh, they're this, this individual is concerned about it. He's wondering what they should be doing, if you could walk us through that. So anybody who's traveled outside the country and outside the province should be self-isolating in their home and, uh, and not exposing themselves to others at all. So if you need to get groceries, then somebody needs to drop that off, but you should be inside your home self-isolating. Thank you, Doctor. Kevin Bissett, Canadian Press. Uh, most of my questions have been asked, but I'll, I will ask this. Uh, Premier, um, with it becoming this time of the year when the flood season is, uh, is in the offing, what assurances can you give uh, to residents that the government will be able to address uh, the flooding uh, situation during the COVID outbreak? 
Well, we will indeed address it as required. Um, we're watching that very closely, and, and currently we've had uh, melting conditions that are like a typical March, so we hope that continues. But nevertheless, EMO have been uh, doing the river watch. They're keeping that up to date. We're, we're actually, uh, we'll be prepared to deal with the flood situation. I was in touch with the base commander uh, earlier this week, just talking about their situation and, and who they have, where the people are stationed. And, and so uh, the preparations for any event that we could be faced with here, that, that certainly floods like we, we've seen before. Um, this situation with the COVID crisis is unique, but we will be prepared and we will do what's necessary to protect our citizens. Do you have a follow-up, Kevin? Yeah, do you foresee uh, having to uh, perhaps uh, use the military more this time than perhaps we have in the past? Well, it's certainly an option available to us. We were, I was very pleased with their participation uh, last year. Um, so if I, if you say, do I foresee it, I, my, I'd like to foresee not needing them at all. Um, and that's what I'm going to stick to at this point, but it's nice to know they're there when we need them. Thank you. Padil Ibrahim, CBC. Yes, thank you. This is a question for Dr. Russell. We see some people on social media are saying they're gathering personal protective equipment to donate them to hospitals. What kind of equipment would be appropriate to donate or give to the healthcare system and what are the rules around that? So what kind of seal should be on there? Uh, my understanding right now is I think that New Brunswick Medical Society is, has, a, 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 has a way for people to make donations and they would have the criteria around that is my understanding. Do you have a follow-up, Adil? Yes, so we've heard uh, the health authorities say that the province has 161 ventilators and more are on order. Um, how and where do we get more ventilators during a global pandemic and have any new machines arrived? So the folks who are working on procuring those, um, I don't have the details in terms of the timelines. I just know that they have been ordered and um, I can definitely come back to you with that information in terms of the exact timing. I just know that the process has been put in place to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. David Caron, Acadie Nouvelle. Oui, bonjour, ça va bien? Oui. Oui. Yeah, my question is for Premier Hicks. So, um, it's been said that uh, in Quebec, um, one of the essential services is seafood processing because, uh, you know, the, 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 the fisheries, the snow crabs fisheries are set to open later this week. Um, so the, 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 the processing is, you know, important process of it and is considered essential. And so we know that in New Brunswick, uh, it's set to begin um, in a couple of weeks, so they hope to. So I'm just wondering what the province's stance is on, uh, on, on fish processing, given that it's a, you know, an important employer for a number of people who, who, who only work uh, seasonal jobs and so on and so forth. So I just wonder what the province's take on that is. Well, food processing, we would consider an essential uh, service as well, and I guess it will come down to uh, the case of being able to do it under the under the public health guidelines and the safe distancing practices, and and wearing appropriate equipment. I know that that uh, that that issue was brought up in relation to foreign workers and they having the accessibility of people to be to be able to work, as well. So, uh, but but our my my goal right now would be to be able to find a way that that business could start up seasonally as as it normally does, and a way to operate it safely. SVV, David. Uh, bounce, uh, no. <laughs> Merci. Mia Urquhart, CBC. My questions are for the Premier. What was the message sent to veterinarians over the weekend about what services they can provide? That's a, it's a good question. I, I do not know what sense, but I, I don't think it was counted as an essential service, but I do not know that. I'll get that answer and respond to you. Okay. Did you have a follow-up, Mia? I do. There seems to be some confusion over whether people can go to the urban nature park, for example. Are they allowed to go to parks, and if so, what rules do they have to follow? So it depends on if somebody is supposed to be self-isolating or self-monitoring. People who are instructed to self-isolate really need to stay at home and uh, they can take a breath of fresh air out in their yard or what have you. Um, for 
my understanding is it's being discouraged to travel to nature parks, et cetera, in terms of using facilities and whatnot. Um, but if somebody's just being told to self-monitor and they're walking and they're keeping themselves two meters apart from somebody or six feet apart from somebody, um, my understanding is that it's okay to go for a walk. So that concludes today's uh, summary. Bonjour, merci tout le monde. Ça, fait, ça vient la fin à notre mise à jour pour aujourd'hui. Merci.